because the sort of documents which you're referring to, these are the sort of things politicians say the most extraordinary things. In this case, they write the most extraordinary things. Behind closed doors, all politicians talk with inflammatory language and they get excited. It isn't really like that when it gets down to the council. When it gets into the council, there is a procedure which is followed and was followed properly. And I would like to take a bet right now because you, you've only, I think you've taken, if I may say, a fairly political sort of angle on this. Let me take it. No, I'm just looking at the facts as, No, no, as, you're as looking, you're looking. Out. Yeah, sure. It's not political yeah, in any way. I'm merely asking you questions no, no, about some of the uh, accusations that have no, been leveled against okay, you. Okay, but ask me some other things as well. They're leveled against me by certain people in a certain way. Had I realised we were going to do this, I'd have brought along the documents which would set that right. But basically, the... What goes on now in the government, the way they sell things, the way things are put over, all the spin and the spin doctors and telling you one thing, meaning another, this is all the same sort of stuff. Infiltration into other people's parties, finding out what they're doing. This Sharp is all practice, politics. isn't it? I thought it was meant to be politics. I personally have never done it. And maybe I can actually tell you. You weren't a dirty fighter. I, th I think you have actually. No, I wasn't. I was you a realistic. You accused of being a dirty I, well, fighter. Well, I don't know who was supposed to have accused me, but whatever. No, but Trisha, I... Trisha Kerwin, who well, resigned from the Housing Committee. Uh, she said, Shirley will fight as dirty as she yeah. has to, as rough as she has Tim, to. Tim, I, bully, 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 I hope you've done your homework all the way, and you know that Patricia Kerwin stood against me for the leadership and lost. She only got a few votes. And to what extent does your philosophy of life come from your father, Jack Cohen, who started up the Tesco supermarkets? Well, he had a tough philosophy, didn't he? I assume that if you start... You can't do business sitting on your... Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> uh, I thought it was armchair. No, no, no. <laughs> armchair is what I'm supposed to say. Ars is what you're supposed to say. This uh, day and age, you can say You've anything. done it for you me. You can say what I can say. Anything. Um, if you start in the markets with nothing but your Royal Flying Corps gratuity, which I think was about £30, and pull a barrow, you know, the trestle tables on your shoulders and to the market, get up 5 o'clock in the morning and have to fight for every inch of the way, I think it strengthens you. Whether I've inherited, I know not. From my part, going through something like this has given me a very, very great sense of um, understanding, a much better understanding of people who've had injustice, and there's a hell of a lot of it around. I was fortunate because I had the means to withstand it, and I was determined. Financial means? Yes, and I, I was determined to do it. I, I was going to fight every inch of the way to, to clear my name because to me that counts enormously. You talked earlier about possibility of anti-Semitism. Did mm. you notice that at school at all when you were growing up? Yes, yes. But that's uh, it was a funny time. It was during the war and there was a fair amount of uh, anti-Semitism. With a name like Cohen it probably doesn't help. You had to be taken out of school, didn't you? No, no. At one no. point? There were the reports you had to be taken out of school. Oh, uh, no, no. That was, uh, that was something... Uh, it was to do with becoming um, the head girl. It seemed rather strange that the, the uh, school would like me to have done so. The, the headmistress would be the one who would actually put up the uh, candidates and then the school would vote. And it became obvious she wasn't going to put me up, so I left. You went off to finishing school mm. in Switzerland. Which, mm. Learn about skiing and little else. Um, what did I learn there? Let me just think. Well, I didn't learn very much. I wasn't there very long. I think it finished me off. I was there about um, seven months. Learned a bit of French. And you got married very early. Very early. Age, age of 18. Mm -hmm. Love at first sight? Um, nearly at first sight. He was very handsome, returning hero from the war, 10 years older than me, a man, as against a uh, sort of youth. And uh, we've just celebrated our golden wedding. So with all that's said about me, uh, if I'm bad, then he likes it. What's been the secret? Mm, I think a certain amount of give and take, a certain amount of excitement. When he was the chairman of Tesco, I was very active with him and took a great interest. And I think when he'd retired and I became much more involved in Westminster, he was very supportive. I used to say, uh, if he's waiting for me to put out his slippers, he's got a long wait coming. <laughs> <laughs> Since the controversy broke, you've spent a lot less time in Britain. Um, people suggested that was because you were almost becoming a fugitive. Why did you decide to leave Britain, essentially? Well, we had a series of events and tragedies, unfortunately. And the first one was that we had a... I came back from India 
I had been on a walking and yoga trip, which was absolutely marvellous. And I came back, probably a bit spaced out, and I walked into our apartment block. And the porter said to me, did you hear about the fire? So I said to him, what fire? So he said, in your apartment. And we'd had a fire early that morning. My husband was lucky to get out. We'd just redecorated. And the whole place uh, really was in a dreadful state. And then we lost our grandson. And, uh, in 1993, mm. in Israel? Yes. And um, my husband's health, it's, he's OK, but he has a little bit of heart trouble. And we felt that the time had come for a change and to consolidate. We've had ties in Israel, our family, for the last oh, over 40 years. And so we decided that we, we would be together with our daughter. And that's what we did. If you had had to pay the fine, the initial 27 million, the figure that was first talked about, would you have paid it, in fact? I've always said, and I'll say the same to you, that I have always paid my debts. If I had not cared about what happened with this case, and also, I want to see justice. I, I feel very, very strongly. We mustn't forget that this, this procedure, which is very Kafka-like, I mean, we didn't know what we were accused of for years, and it really, it was pretty awful, and one poor Why man... Why didn't you know what you were accused of? Because that's the way it was. You had interviews and interviews, and, you, and finally, uh, I can't remember but how there many were years there were pretty in. specific allegations oh, which no, were made no. in the press, on the BBC, for instance, well, ten, you, ten I, years ago. I don't want to upset you, but, but that, that is not justice. We can't respond just no, to what the press but you knew what says. was being said. It isn't a question of what was being said. It's what is the order to actually accusing you of. And I think what you're thinking about is that halfway along, he had a press conference where he actually, this was just an investigation at that time, where he actually uh, said, in very colourful language, what he thought of what we'd done. And, and that was said before we'd even got to court. So that was extremely unfair. And the whole procedure, the way it's been carried out, has already been declared by Lord Neil, no, I think it's Lord Nolan, actually, uh, that, uh, that it's wrong and it's not going to continue. So already they know it's flawed because he was judge and jury. And yet it goes the to the Lords time. who will have the final say on this. No, they will, they will look at the law, pure and simple. So if, it go, if it goes against you, how will you well, feel then? Well, the, we're, extremely, the we're extremely confident because the Lords will, will look at it and I'm sure that, well, I, I believe that we will win. If not, then we will go to the Court of Human Rights. There is no way that I wouldn't take this all the way because what we did was perfectly legal and that we did nothing wrong. If I didn't care about it, I would just take off. Why should I waste millions and millions and loads of money on clearing my name if I don't believe in what I, uh, what I did? You, you've said you would always pay your debts and you've said you mm -hmm. would have paid the fine. Why did you move so much money out of Britain? When you decide that you are going to live outside Britain, that we just did whatever our accountants and professional people told us to do, and that's what we do. That's a perfectly normal way of doing it. You won't have to go looking in, uh, I don't know, Belize or wh wherever else these places are. Where my money is, is known. So I don't consider I did anything wrong at all. When you look back at this, you regret going into politics, don't you? I've thought about that. I certainly regret... You certainly said you regret it. Yeah, well, I regret the last 10 years. Positive, negative. Uh, it's negative. It, 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 it doesn't really help anybody. It's cost £7 million of public money. There'll be a couple more by the time they've gone through this um, next step. And what does it mean? It means that the public purse will pay for it. There's an accountant making £275 an hour at the public's expense. What for? What point has been proved at the end of it? Most people in local government, for example, the local government chronicle, which is the, uh, you know, if you like, it's the kind of um, trade journal of councillors, have come out firmly, firmly on our side. They say that the way that uh, local government has always been run is the way that we interpreted it. So I think, I, I wish... You said if, if there were any sins, there were the sins of the 80s. You're being hounded for the sins of the 80s. Yes, I believe that. What, what, what is that? Well, what that is. The era in which uh, new standards were introduced, and the era in which people were able to do things in the that 80s they or the 90s. In no, the 80s. no, no, no. In the, in the 80s, that they haven't been able to do before. No, the 80s merely continued everything that it had done before. Um, this is the way local councils have always been run. Otherwise, why would you have political parties if you weren't allowed to think politically? I think you know, there's no point. 
So what happened in the 80s was it became very, very nasty. Those uh, uh, members in the Labour Party who were expelled because they were t troublemakers came down to the local council level and suddenly the whole ball game changed and became very, very nasty. And so we had some very rough years. Now it's changed again and they've taken off and they've become new Labour. Good luck to them. A lot of people, Dame Shirley, are going to say that, mm. all right, you've had these 10 years, but in a sense you asked for it. You knew these were going to be controversial policies. You knew they were going to upset people. And, uh, you know, given the, the number of judges along the way found against you, you can see how, how divided opinion is over what you've done. It's still divided, isn't it? I believe that this is a country where justice prevails. And I think it's very, very important not to get this whole issue clouded with what has been written in the media, what has been poured out, drip, drip. I mean, it's all clever stuff. No, I'm talking about what judges have said. Judges? Well, in, in terms of the judges, the higher up you go, the more senior. These are very, very difficult issues. I and mean, when we're trying to deal with it here and now uh, in a shortish time, you, you can't just do that. You have to look at the issues completely. And the judges uh, in the higher courts have found for us. And I would expect that when we get to the House of Lords and there are five there, they will find for us. The, the point at issue is whether or not you can, uh, whether or not there is a place for politics in local government. That is really the issue. And whether there are lines which you shouldn't cross. I mean, there's always a place for politics in local, local government. But no. Whether according, there are according, lines that you shouldn't cross. Well, uh, you have to understand the committee procedure very much. The committee... Whether council officials should be used for party political purposes. I would think you'll find that the council officials were not used for that. Otherwise, why are they not guilty themselves? At this present moment, there's nobody left in this besides the, myself and uh, the gentleman who was then the deputy. But I want to just go back for one moment, if I may, because I never want to forget this. In the midst of all this, the uh, chairman of the housing committee, the, they, they were joint chairman, who was a very, very good man. He was um, a doctor for, uh, for elderly people in the public health service. He had such a terrible time with people coming out with the sort of things you said, he, he couldn't take it, and he committed suicide. Now, I think that's dreadful. We hadn't even got to court. But because do you take any responsibility for that? I'm sorry, extremely sorry. I do not take responsibility, but that doesn't stop me from saying that I think somebody can take responsibility for a flawed system and procedure that could allow something like this to happen. But you don't take responsibility we for, would have, for this? In we would have been all. better off if it had been a criminal offence. That's what I feel, because I could have been out there and we could have spoken, we could have said, we could have done, it would have been a simpler case. What has happened here, this is a civil case. This isn't a criminal case. And people appear to be able to say whatever they like with impunity. And what that's have you what learned about doing. yourself in the process, do you think? I think I've learned that I'm, I'm pretty resilient. It's been very difficult, very, very tough. I put things in context. If my grandson had not been killed, probably I might have gone down even sooner. It may, would have affected me even more, but I see what is important in life and what isn't. I think I've learned that um, when I went into the council, I really just went in, I thought, oh, I was always civic-minded. I came from a family that were always involved. And we moved to London, and I thought it looked a bit dirty. I'd like to see it cleaned up. And I got involved with all sorts of things, a bit of a retail philosophy, you know, like good for the customer. And I wanted to see things made better. We had the one-stop service. You can come into Westminster and get all your services in one floor, everything. And you loved the media well, then? I, I think the media and I got on very well. At that time? In fact, I think the media loves it. They want you up there so they can bring you down there and then they can do vice versa. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's you just can a watch game, it. is it? I think it's a game for them. All right. It's not a game for me. I'm Shirley Porter. Thank you very much for being with us on the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, for some of us, it's quite a rainy day over the British Isles.